for quite some time now the students have been demanding one uh, video on this topic the breath sounds they said it's quite confusing so please explain uh, the breath sounds the origin of breath sounds the types of breath sounds and then the adventitious sounds foreign sounds like rails ronka etc so let's try to understand uh, the these breath sounds their origins how they are heard and then the foreign sounds now first thing uh, is that a sound is produced in the body when there is certain amount of turbulence i am going to discuss the biophysics behind it as also the physiology and clinical stuff but this thing should be very very clearly understood that the sounds that we can hear with stethoscope those sounds are generally created because of a certain amount of turbulence it could be the turbulence of blood as in the case of korotkov sounds or it could be the turbulence of air as in the case of these breath sounds so that's the first point to be cleared and now these breath sounds how are they produced look air as we inspire it goes through the respiratory passages the trachea the bronchi bronchioles and finally reaches the alveoli and from the alveoli and from the lungs i mean we place stethoscope over the chest wall so from these alveoli and coming out of the lung tissue and through the thoracic cage we have placed a stethoscope over here and we get to hear these sounds okay but the point is the sound is produced in the upper airways whether it is a vesicular breath sound which is a normal sound or whether it's a bronchial breath sound which is heard in abnormalities both these sounds are produced in the air upper airways in the upper airways there is turbulence of the air this turbulence of the air in the upper airways is responsible for that sound production okay now this sound which got produced in the upper airways and and uh, mind you this is only a diagrammatic representation to make the things simpler okay to make the things understandable once the sound is produced in the upper airway by the turbulence of the sound then i beg your pardon by the turbulence of air i mean turbulence of air produces these sounds in the upper airways then that sound which got produced it is going to pass through the alveoli and then that sound will come to the uh, chest surface and we hear those sounds uh, with the stethoscope okay so cause of production of the sound what is it turbulence of air in the upper airways look lower airways and alveoli they have a great cross sectional area and air will get distributed in them there won't be any turbulence but upper airways trachea bron main bronchi they are they don't have that much cross sectional area therefore air will flow with velocity and there will be turbulence in that air flow okay please understand this now what is the vesicular sound let's try to understand the vesicular sound vesicular sound is heard normally normally the sound that we hear over the chest wall the the breath sound that we get is the vesicular sound how do you describe the vesicular sound inspiration is long and inspiration is intense inspiration is prolonged or long and intense and it is twice as much as expiration so this is inspiration this is expiration you can see inspiration is twice uh, in duration 
twice as much as expiration. This is diagrammatic representation, okay, to have a clear visual understanding. So, inspiration is long, expiration is short, inspiration is more intense than expiration and there is no gap between these two sounds. Uh, between inspiration uh, and the expiration, between the inspiratory breath sound and expiratory breath sound. No gap, no pause, okay. And now the most important part, most important part, the sound that got produced in the upper airways, as it passes through these alveoli, alveoli being small sacs, Alveoli are small air sacs, so vesicles, alveoli we are calling them vesicles. When this sound which, uh, which was produced here in the upper airway, while it is passing through the alveoli and normally alveoli contain air, the, this sound gets modified because air is a bad conductor of sound relatively air is a bad conducting or bad conductor for the sound and therefore, some of the high pitch high frequency sounds will get filtered out, I mean they will not reach the chest wall and what we hear is a low pitch low frequency sound and often this sound is described as rustling of leaves. The vesicular sound is described as low pitch, low frequency sound like rustling of leaves. When uh, wind blows through the leaves, there is this rustling sound. This vesicular sound is somewhat resembles that and therefore, it is called as, I mean it is, this is the vesicular breath sound. But the point that you should have noted in this is that the original sound which was produced, it was produced in the upper airways, but as it gets transmitted through the alveoli, alveoli the air sacs or vesicles, these vesicles called alveoli, they modify that sound and some frequencies just cannot pass through and why is that? Because alveoli normally contain air and air is a bad conducting medium for the sound. So, only few frequencies are passing through this air and we are able to hear those frequencies or hear that sound with the help of stethoscope placed over the chest wall, okay. That is the vesicular breath sound. So, what you have to uh, say to the examiner is that vesicular breath sound is heard normally in normal individuals because in normal individuals the vesic these alveoli contain air. Alveoli which we are now calling as vesicles, okay. That is why the name vesicular breath sound. How is it described? Inspiration is twice the expiration and there is no gap between the two. Inspiration is more prolonged and intense. Expiration is shorter and uh, cause of production I have already mentioned. Now, when I, men when I talk about the bronchial breath sound, you will realize this difference completely. Let us understand the bronchial breath sound. We are talking about the breath sound. I have already made one video on tactile vocal parameters where uh, the patient has to say 111 or 999. Here patient has to just take deep breathing. We are talking about breath sounds. All right. Uh, and uh, just further, just one little explaining point is inspiration is twice the expiration we have said that. So, phase 1, phase 2 and phase 3 is expiration if we have to uh, break them further then it will be like this phase 1, phase 2 in the alveoli and then phase 3 will be expiration. Phase 1 when air uh, is passing through the upper airways, that is this. Phase 2, when air enters the alveoli, that is this phase. And then phase 3 is expiration. Expiration means air coming out of the alveoli and 
then through the respiratory passage coming out. If these three phases are there for a breath sound, now see what happens in the bronchial breath sound. Bronchial breath, so breath sound is heard abnor in abnormal conditions. Abnormal conditions, for instance, when there is consolidation of the lung parenchyma. Let us have a diagrammatic uh, view of this. Let us say here are the alveoli, uh, the lung parenchyma is consolidated or there is some fluid accumulation in this area of the lung here. Now what happens is solid is a good conducting medium. Solid is a good conducting medium for the sound. So, what happens is the sound that was produced in the upper airways, let us say in the bronchi, will be carried as it is up to the chest wall. We have placed stethoscope over here on the chest wall. So, the sound got produced in the upper airway only. We have said the cause of production of sound is turbulence of air in the upper airways. So, the sound that gets produced in the upper airways does not get modified this time. I am talking about bronchial breath sound. It does not get modified. Why? Because now the lungs are consolidated. Solids are good conducting medium. So, how you should describe it? The sound that is produced in the upper airways, in the bronchi, trachea bronchi, is carried as it is to the chest wall without any modification by these alveoli, without any modification by these vesicles. And therefore, this sound will be called as bronchial breath sound because the sound that was produced in the, let us say, bronchi was heard as it is without any change, without any modification. Why was there no modification? Because now between the production of sound and in the, steth uh, and the stethoscope, there is a good conducting medium. So, the sound that was produced here in the bronchi or upper airways is carried as it is to the chest wall. Okay. What was the case in vesicular breath sound? Vesicles, the alveoli contain air and air the bad conducting medium. So, the sound that was produced in the bronchi, trachea and bronchi or upper airways was was modified, it got modif modified by the air present in these vesicles, air present in these alveoli, which is a normal thing actually, okay. Air in the alveoli, normal individual. So, in normal condition, we are getting modified sound. And in abnormalities, like as I said, uh, uh, pneumonia, consolidation of the lungs or any such condition, you get the, no, the original sound in the abnormal conditions, I mean in a disease condition abnormalities, you get the original sound, whereas normally you are getting modified sound by the air. Okay. So, because of the consolidation, solid being good conducting uh, medium, the sound that was produced in the upper airways is carried as it is from this consolidated tissue up to the chest wall and we hear it with stethoscope. That is the bronchial breath sound. Okay? Please understand the difference between the two. Uh, how do you describe the bronchial breath sound? Inspiration and expiration are equal and there is a gap between inspiration and expiration. Inspiration and expiration are equal in duration and there is a pause, there is a gap between the two. And you know why is it's, uh, this gap is present in the bronchial breath sound? It is because this phase 2 of inspiration is absent in the bronchial breath sound. Why is it absent? It is because look, we said phase 1, stage 1 was air travelling through the upper airways. Phase 2 is this air and sound actually going through the alveoli. And phase 3 was expiration. So, 1, 2 and 3. Now, imagine that phase number 2, that is the alveolar phase, will be absent, suppose. Why it is absent? Because it is the alveoli which are the culprit, you know. Now, this time 
there is fluid or consolidation in the lung parenchyma and therefore alveoli are responsible for a different type of a sound. So, phase 1 and then 2 is absent. So, I have shown that as a gap and then phase 3. So, let us draw it and compare it once again. Vesicular breath sound like this phase 1, phase 2 and phase 3 and inspiration is twice the expiration. This is inspiration, this is expiration, right? Bronchial breath sound, this phase number 2 is absent, the alveolar phase of that sound. Why? It is because mainly that the lungs are consolidated, alveoli are filled with air or any such abnormality. Now, that abnormality becomes a good conducting medium, but this phase which was there in the normal breath sound will be absent because vesicles are not normal now. So, this will be absent, right? And therefore, bronchial breath sound can be shown like this phase 1, then absent phase number 2, and then phase number 3. So, this is the bronchial breath sound. This is vesicular breath sound. I repeat one last time that is in normal conditions when the alveoli are or alveoli are those vesicles, they are filled with air which is normal, we get a modified sound. That is high pitch, high frequency uh, sounds get filtered out, they can't be heard and we get a low pitch, low frequency sound called as vesicular breath sound. It is like rustling of leaves and these are the phases. This is how it is described. In abnormal conditions, we get a bronk, we get a original sound, unmodified sound. The sound that was produced in the bronchi is heard as it is from the stethoscope. Why? Because of a good conducting medium. The disease condition creates a good conducting medium for the sound which got produced in the airways. That is the vesicular and bronchial breathing or breath sounds. Let us quickly also see the foreign sounds or adventitious sounds. Uh, in disease conditions, in addition to these sounds, I mean vesicular breath sound is the only sound that you should be hearing normally. But in abnormal conditions, uh, I have mentioned a few pulmonary fibrosis, pneumonia, consolidation of the lungs, you will also get some adventitious sounds. Uh, the first one is called as rails, also called as crepts, also called as crepitations. These are all used as synonyms, crepts or crepitations or rails. I just want you to uh, take an example. It is not exactly the same, but for the sake of example. Well, first of all, this will be seen in pneumonia, consolidation uh, of the lung parenchyma, interstitial lung disease, pulmonary fibrosis, uh, edema fluid formation, pulmonary edema. In all these conditions, you will get rails or crepts. Now, imagine how it happens. Let us say your sound, breath sound is produced here in the upper airways. What happens additionally, in addition to the bronchial breath sound that will be heard in these conditions like pneumonia, etc. Imagine the alveoli are filled with fluid and I am, this is just giving an example, okay, sound is not exactly like that. Air, we have inspired air and it is going through this fluid. You must have experienced this in a bucket full of water. Uh, when you uh, dip some container and air escapes in the form of air bubbles. Have you heard that sound? Can you recall it? Can you imagine it for a while? Somewhat similar, I mean not exactly like same, okay. The conceptually it is not the same. I am just saying, just it is comparable. Imagine that the air bubbles going through the water, okay. Somewhat similar concept is here. We have inspired the air and this air now is passing through the fluid or passing through, uh, I mean from the edema fluid or fluid in the alveoli or 
pneumonia, consolidation of the lungs. Then air passing through the fluid, you will get an extra sound which are called as rails or crepts or crepitations. So when you hear these sounds, when, when would you hear these sounds in the pneumonia, pulmonary edema, consolidation of the lungs, uh, interstitial lung disease, etc. The second type of sound is ronchi. Uh, when you hear them through the stethoscope, they are called as ronchi. And if they can be heard without stethoscope, they can also be called as wheezing sounds. So, these sounds are commonly heard in the conditions of COPDs, bronchial asthma. Now, imagine a whistling type of sound. You know, when we narrow our outlet of mouth, and air is coming through that narrowed outlet, a whistle is generated or any narrow tube, I mean any tube, if it is narrowed and air is passing through it, a whistling sound will be produced. This is this, that type of a whistling sound. When airways are narrowed, constricted, and when the air has to, inspired air has to pass through it or expired air, has to pass through the narrowed, constricted airways, it will create this whistling type of a sound called as ronchi or uh, audible without stethoscope, it's also called as wheezing sound. So remember uh, these two, uh, uh, there is one more actually, the plural rub. You know, in certain conditions like pleurisy, plural effusion, inflammation of the pleura, there is rubbing of the pleural layers, you know, two layers of pleura, the parietal and visceral. They rub on each other, creating this rubbing type of sound called as plural, plural rub. So, that is another adventitious or foreign sound. These are the adventitious sounds, but this video was particularly dedicated to the production of vesicular and bronchial sounds and the genesis and the basis, conceptual basis for the production of these two sounds.